functions is one of the most important features of Excel, and of course, you don't need to know all of them. However, if your work requires you to manage and analyze data in Excel, there are nine functions you must know as they can really help you in many different tasks. The first three of them are the basic functions sum, average, and count. The other six are variations of these basic functions, which are applied to more complex calculations. So stay with me until the end of this video so you can master each one of them. Let's start! Let's start with the basic math and statistical functions you must know in Excel. In this simple example, we have this table on the left side, which shows the products your company sold in a given period, a notation if that sale was made online or in a store, and the price you achieved in the sale of the products A, B, and C. On this table on the right side, we need to demonstrate in this column I the result expected for each required information in this column F. So, if your manager asks you to calculate the total sales of all products in this period, regardless if the sale took place online or in your store, you just need to use the function SUM in the cell I3. So, press equals here and type the word SUM. This list with all the functions which contain the word SUM will pop up in the screen. Select the first option by pressing TAB. The argument of this function is basically this range D3 to D20, which contains the values we want to sum up. You can then close brackets and press enter, and you can see total sales was $937 during this period. We should now calculate the average of prices achieved by your company during this time. Note this calculation should not be restricted by any condition, so we need an average calculation for all products and including all sale types. As there is no condition here, simply use the function average and use again the same range argument D3 to D20. Close brackets and press enter. The result $52.10 will be displayed here. In case you need to know the total number of sales that took place during this period for all products and for any sale type, you just need to use the function COUNT. Again, use the same range argument D3 to D20, which is the place where the calculation is being performed. The correct result will be displayed here. Now, a bonus tip on this topic. Whenever you want to insert a simple function sum below your dataset, you just need to select the closest cell to this range down here and press the shortcut ALT equals. The function sum will be automatically inserted, and the range argument will be all these cells above which contain a numerical value. If you then press ENTER or CTRL ENTER to remain in the same cell, the correct result of $937 will be returned to you. This command is known as auto sum, but you can also have access to different functions by going to the home menu, editing, and expanding this sum icon. Here you can choose alternative functions such as average, count, maximum, minimum, among others. For now, let's clean this data and complete this table up here. In this example, we haven't yet inserted any restriction on the type of calculation we are performing. In reality, you are most likely to work with one or more conditions in your dataset. For example, in this section of the table, we want to know the total sales of product B, the average price sold of product C, and the total number of sales of product A. In this case, it doesn't matter if the sales took place online or in a store. Therefore, we need to analyze this data using one condition or criteria, which in this case is the product name. In case you need to calculate the sum of a series based on a single criteria, use the function sum if. So, select the cell I7, press equals and type the word sum. The function you need is in the second position, and here you just need to press tab in this highlighted option to select it. This function now requires three arguments. The first one is the range argument, which in this case is this range related to all product names from column B. 
press comma to skip to the next argument, which is the criteria itself. Here we want to restrict the sum of sales for product B, so we can either type the letter B in quotation marks, or we can make this process dynamic and link this argument to this cell G7. Press come again to skip to the last argument, which is the sum range, located in the range D3 to D20. Close brackets and press enter. The result shows that the total sales amount for product B in this sample, regardless of how the sale took place, is $397. Note that as I linked the argument criteria to this cell G7, the result of the function is dynamic. So, if we select different product names in this cell G7, the correct result will be displayed in the cell I7. For this example, let's stick to the product B in the cell. Calculating the average of a series with a single condition is also easy. Instead of using the function average, you just need to use the function average if. So, type the first letters of the word average and select the option average if and press stop to insert it. This function is very similar to the function sum if, so the argument range must be this range which displays all product names available from cell B3 to B20. The criteria itself must be the product C in this case, so select cell G8 and press comma to skip to the next argument. For the argument average range, select again this portion of column D, where your numerical data is located, close brackets and press enter. The correct result is displayed in the screen, and again, we can select alternative scenarios in this drop-down list if needed. To calculate the total number of sales of product A is also simple. Instead of using the function count, here you need to use the function count if. So, insert that function in the cell I9 using the same procedures we explained before. This function requires two arguments. Range is the range of column B, which shows all the product names from each sale. The argument criteria is this cell G9. Close brackets and press enter. So, this function indicates that there were four sales related to product A during this period, and we can visually confirm that this was indeed the case here. Whenever you need to work with one or more conditions in your calculations, you just need to use the respective Excel functions. For example, in this last section of this table, we need to make some specific calculations based on these two conditions, product name, which can be A, B or C, and also the sale type, which can be either store or online. If you need to calculate the total sales based on these two conditions, you should then use the Excel function sum ifs. So, let's insert this function in the cell I11. Now, pay attention as this is a tricky thing you need to understand. In this type of function, you start with the sum range first and then impose the restrictions as opposed to the function sum if, which starts with the condition first and then the sum range. Excel does that to make sure the place where you need to perform the calculation is defined in advance and you then just need to worry about the sequence of criteria range and the criteria set themselves. So, the first argument of this function is the sum range, which comes again from this range D3 to D20. We now need to limit the sum of sales related to product B, so select this range B3 to B20 for this argument called criteria range 1 and press comma. We now need to define the criteria 1, which in this case is the product B from cell G11. The first condition is done, so press comma to start the second condition, which is the criteria range 2. Here, select the range C3 to C20 related to all sale types and press comma. Now, you need to define the criteria 2, which must be the word store, located in this cell H11, which is behind this function. So, make sure you select the correct cell here, close brackets and press enter. The result should indicate that your company has made $196 in sales of product B 
which took place in store. To calculate the average based on two conditions, you just need to insert the function average ifs. And the process is exactly the same. So the first argument, average range, is this numerical data from this portion of column D. Criteria range 1 is this list of product names from this range of column B. The product itself we need is this product C from the cell G12. Press comma to skip to the last condition. Here we have this range C3 to C20 as the criteria range 2 and then the cell H12 as the criteria 2. You can then close brackets and press enter. Therefore, the average price of product C for sales online was $65, which is the average of these two specific data points highlighted in the screen. Finally, we need to count data points based on two conditions. So, instead of using the function count or count if, you need to use the function count ifs in the cell I13. We don't need to worry about the numerical range when counting data using one or more conditions, so we just focus on the criteria set themselves. For the argument criteria range 1, we have this portion of column B, and for the criteria 1, we have the product A from cell G13. The criteria range 2 is this range of column C, and the criteria 2 is the word store from cell H13. Close brackets and press enter. In this case, there were two sales from product A which took place in the store, which are the first and last data points of this dataset. Now a bonus tip to close this topic. Whenever you receive a dataset and you just want to have a quick and basic insight over your numbers, you actually don't need to make any calculations. Simply select the numerical range of your dataset and keep your eyes at the bottom right side of your screen, as Excel automatically displays here the results of the basic math and statistical functions average, count, and sum. You can then confirm the results here are matching exactly the results of the functions we created before at the beginning of this video. This can be a huge time saver when you need to quickly talk about your dataset in a meeting, for example. So now, anytime you need to perform math or statistical calculations using one or more conditions, you know how to approach the problem. Now, a quick task for you. Tell me in the comments below which function covered in this video was the most important one to you. Finally, if you have family or friends struggling with functions in Excel, Please share this free video with them. More people should know about these things. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.